guys welcome back to my youtube channel in case this is your first time kindly subscribe and give this video a like i'm in the restaurant i came today and i want to explain some of the reasons why i left burundi but then before that it's where it's better like maybe i say some of the reasons why i left rwanda i was rwanda some eight seven days ago seven days ago yeah so I left Rwanda and then went to Burundi, then I'm in Dar es Salaam, Tanzania. So in Rwanda, there are so many things that made me feel happy, like really it's full of life. But then there are some of the reasons which I feel like I need to go. Because I feel like even though like I feel I'm safe and I'm free, I would say that freedom is in quotes, okay. I remember there's some of the videos which I shot and for some reason I was told to delete. So, that is one of, the, one of the things that made me leave Rwanda. Most of my vlogs for some reason, they were ending in a police station and when a policeman Look at that, it's really nice. When a policeman sees me with a camera, they would stop me. I had like five encounters with police. And one of the encounters, I remember, in one of the encounters, I remember, they held me or rather they detained me. Let me use the right term here. They detained me for like five hours. Okay. I was like 5 p.m. I was shooting um, uh, along the streets, which are very rich. Anyway, <laughs> then it happened. I landed in some of the places where shooting was not allowed. But I passed them really quickly, and I didn't like shoot, make a video of that place. So instead of shooting, I bypassed them. But then it happened like. I'm working Muslim Jamaat in Tanzania, so this is my road and I just have to walk. I don't know whether I'll be arrested for this. So, so when I reached where the policemen uh, uh, saw me, they, they stopped me and then they interrogated me for some time. They were two gentlemen. Then after that, they gave me to some to some guys where those guys after interrogating me they gave me to other two guys and then they left so I had to to bring up the story again explain the whole situation again and for me it was like too tiresome because after that the, these two guys, they handed me to another one guy who handed me over to another guy and had to repeat the same story. And then the next thing, everyone that I had, had spoken to, they had to take a photograph of my passport. That was not really cool because one person was just enough, but everyone in that place took my, the, the, a picture of my passport photos and my details and everything and it, for me I thought that that was like harassing me even though like not physical that was very emotional so after I left Rwanda Rwanda had I was held like three times then I went to Musambaze Musambaze didn't well Musambaze when I was leaving Musambaze to go to Geseni another policeman showed from nowhere and then he as well called me and the video is in my YouTube video in my YouTube channel so in case you want to verify you might check in some of my videos and you see the guy stopped me and I was, had already passed them and I had not even recorded the police station I had passed it but then they called me and then I told them like I'm not feeling welcomed in this place I started being a narcissist like now see that gaslighting <laughs> that's where i began that was my new card so 
I told them like I'm not really feeling as if I'm welcomed in this country. And then from that, that's when they, he started t telling me like, no, no, Kenya and Rwanda are very good friends, no. I asked, her, I asked him, now do you want to take a photo of my passport just like your fellows? Because they've taken like lots of pictures of my passport and I didn't feel like that is something like I felt that I was comfortable with someone taking a, a, pos a photo of your passport. So I'd, after that he said no, he's not going to take the passport, a photo. And so he raised me and because I played like a narcissist role. And then after that, I assured him like I, I don't think I'm going to visit Rwanda again like because if I can't do that, then I don't feel like I should be visiting because the reason why I was visiting is to show people around and if I cannot show people around, then I'm not, I'm not like a tourist, I'm a traveler. There's a difference between them, those two things. <laughs> and I remember telling them that tourists, if you want to see tourists, they, especially the white people, they are tourists. Those are, we call them tourists, but black people, we are not tourists. We are travelers, so... The guy released me later and then this is Sofia Kawawa Street, Sofia Kawawa Street. Quite good. So so that was it and became one of the reasons why I feel like I have to leave Rwanda. Because you can't just film anywhere and even though you are filming yourself they will they will have to stop you everywhere. So I feel like that is not a place I would, I would rather be. And then the problem is, during the time, my computer had broken up, had broken, and so I couldn't use, like, you see, like, how you can merge, like, different clips and then maybe come up with one big video, so... So immediately they sought me, that was the end of that video. <laughs> and so, my phone, before you asked about my phone, my phone was not able to handle all that editing so that was out of the question that was Rwanda then I came to Burundi now Burundi is a complete different story so I remember from Kigali from Kigali to Bujumbura whole different story I decided to take a bus according to the estimation the time that was supposed to that it takes to for someone from Kigali to Bunjobura using a bus according to the guys around they said eight hours but I remember we we started the journey quite early in the morning I remember we took more than 12 hours and the road was very dangerous I've shared this video I've shared this in my YouTube channel. The road was really dangerous. Komen Krumah Street. Komen Krumah was one of the presidents in Ghana. So, these are some of the buses. Was one of the presidents in Ghana. And he played a great role in Ghana's independence in 1957. That's my history. So, I'm trying to, um, to pick on the right direction, so I, I think I'll just use this road. So, after arriving in Bujumbura, I've shown the clip of Bujumbura, the town itself, the way it, it is. Oh man, I didn't enjoy being there. And the reason was simple. The place, for me, didn't look like a city, like I would stay. And even when in the capital city, like Bujumbura CBD, you'd feel like you're not in town. Like, it was like they, uh, how can I put it now? You know, like, still this is the city, this is the city. But then it was lesser, very few things, like, very few varieties of things when it comes to food, when it comes to drinks. Then I think that I didn't feel comfortable with the fact that my, the room which I booked was like 40,000 Burundian francs cheaper 
and that's that's good but then it was cheap and very comfortable let me walk through this so it was cheap and then very very clean like hygiene wise that's a tick but then the problem was they say they will, there is the internet but once you get in that was a completely different story there was no internet at all and so for the two days I stayed there I didn't access the internet I was not able to call even anyone at home or anything so I felt like that's not a city to live in and when I asked like a, another guy in another hotel that he, st he was staying he told me the same story like the internet they are really bad and so these, those were some of the hotels which were a bit like moderate not very expensive like not very expensive but not cheap and so then when it comes to nightlife Oh, that's a lost city. There's no nightlife. Like no one is, no one is out there having some food, having some drinks. Like the instead of the normal pubs and bars, the people there they it was so like shocking because they kind of hide themselves in a in a room, like somehow in a room or a corridor like this, and they start drinking. And the electricity, I remember, even the same in my house, the electricity, the day I was there, the electricity was so stable. So every 9 p.m. the electricity would go off. And that was really bad because after it goes off, there's nothing else to light the room. So you either sleep or just do anything. And you can't go out because even out it's darker than in the inside. So I felt like the owner or something that you are... They were, this is Tanzania Revenue Authority, Mapato House. I felt like the owner at, at 9 p.m. was cutting the electricity. And so we would not like get like electricity. So yeah, look at this, really beautiful. Just after Tanzanian Authority, this is what we get. So. Guys, that's, those are some of the reasons why I feel like Burundi is not a country like I would like to stay. It has a beautiful lake. Lake Tanganyika is one of the deepest freshwater lakes, the second. And so, that's really good. But then when it comes to the fact that you, you will not feel comfortable, especially if you live in a place where nightlife is, nightlife is the thing, you don't like it so there I said no so finally I came to the restaurant here in Tanzania which is quite moderate at least I can live I can stay here around then after some time I can now draft my next journey which is like in two days I'm feeling so from the find I'm seeing Kivukoni and Morogoro Road and so and Mtan, Mtan Mission. So, feel free to look around. So, the where people go to to Zanzibar is this place. So, lots of street food. Yeah. So, it's really modern. So, this is not the same I would you'd see in Burundi. I know that I'm saying like Burundi is a bad country, but don't get me wrong. I'm just saying like. If you're not used to such conditions, then you might not like it. Then, of course, if you take the bus, I've already warned you, it's a risky journey. Sometimes it, it rains, and when it rains, the buses are not able to move well, so it can be very tiresome. And then the fact that they overstaff the people, like the bus that we took, we, I came in, was carrying a hundred people, which is like more than half of what it's supposed to carry. And so like you can see how dangerous it was and you see like it was like this if I can demonstrate this is land and this is lake so like Tanganyika there's no barrier between the lake and the, the lake and the land and so so this is what really made me feel unsafe at the time 
because I felt like if at all any mistake that it happens then you might not be able to to get alive especially if you're not, not a good swimmer so I was not able to I can't do that again like if if I go to Burundi I'm taking a plane like just take the cost other than cutting the cost and then you find yourself very in a very dangerous place so I'm going to go all the way to that place show you this is called Kivukoni this is where you take a ferry to Zanzibar and yep was just an impromptu just wanted to tell you some of the reasons why I was leaving those countries sometimes I would leave the country more earlier than what I was thinking and so here we are so many and so guys Anyway, I'm happy to be in the restaurant, but the things I came for while well, here, like my ATM card, I was not able to take it. So that will be another video tomorrow. And so, yeah. So as you can see, there is a Zan, Zan Fast Ferries. And then there is another one, Ferry Azam Marin. Azam Marin there. And so guys, these are some of the guys that are going to Zanzibar. Johari Rotana. Feel free to look around. Yep, so look at this. Nice, 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 nice. So hopefully no one is going to stop me here. Even if it was Rwanda, I'm sure someone would be here just uh, telling me, oh don't film, why are you filming? So I was like fed up. <laughs> so guys, that is Zan Fast Ferries and this is Kilimanjaro. Or as a marine, so whichever you want, you should take. And so, this is Armashauria Jiji, the bus station. So, this is Nyerere Square. So, I think I've shown you some places around while giving you stories. And so, if you're new here, kindly subscribe, like this video. And let me know what you think about this so I'm going to catch up with you in another video where I'll be explaining in detail some of the bad things that I've seen over time so I walk up to the that road which goes left this is Johari Rotana so it's so big and this is a bus station where everyone is waiting for a bus to their destination so uh, look at this it's very modern the bus comes and stands here and picks the passengers so guys that marks the end of my video i think you've enjoyed let me know what you think about this as i meet you in the next video until next time bye bye